Okay, so I'll, I'll mention one thing briefly, um, which is just that uh, there's a branch of our research um, that, uh, you know, in the lab um, over the past, uh, say, year or so, um, but it will continue on with this, of trying to sort of raise the abstraction level. So at a, at a very like high, you know, conceptual level, snorkel is kind of about switching tra uh, the act of uh, labeling training data from a hand labeling process to a, a programming process. Um, there's nothing magical there that makes it instantaneously, you know, like super, super easy. But we think that, you know, once you're, once you are in this code as supervision paradigm, you can do what, what everyone does with code is you build up layers of abstraction bit by bit. You build up libraries, you build up higher level interfaces that are more declarative. Um, so that's one thing that as a lab we're trying to do. So, you know, we kind of think of as the same, le same way that, you know, programming languages, you go from machine language to assembly to higher level ones to even like, you know, declarative interfaces like SQL all the way up to like, you know, graphical user interfaces. We want to try to do the same thing where, you know, for training data, you can imagine the equivalent to machine languages like individual labels. But, you know, the next level up is sort of labeling functions. But we want to keep going higher. So, you know, we've done some prototypes in this, in this area. Um, you know, one thing is a project that Paroma, uh, who was just here, worked on, which is, uh, was specifically for, for images, where it's kind of harder to write labeling functions. That was the initial motivation. Um, we just ran a bunch of off-the-shelf, unsupervised algorithms that selected features, like put bounding boxes around different objects, uh, you know, edge detectors, shape detectors, all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, made it easier to write labeling functions over those. Um, that pseudo exists somewhere, but yeah, conceptually. Um, one thing that we worked on, uh, another one of my lab mates that was at ACL this year was actually taking natural language explanations using what are called semantic parsers to turn them from, you know, sentences into functions and then dumping those in as labeling functions. And we're actually working on, uh, for a Friday deadline, for an initial workshop paper, on, um, with our radiology collaborators actually like watching where people look uh, and trying to use this for extra higher level signal. So there's all kinds of, you know, both practical and, and weird ideas that we have here. But the idea is just to try to, you know, build up this stack and ultimately try to make machine learning radically easier to, to train or to program. So that's one thing that we're very interested in. Another thing that we're working on, this is actually an open source code that will be gradually merged into Snorkel as well, um, is a sort of multitask uh, version of this. So I'll kind of briefly go through this. Um, here's some of the intuition. Multitask can mean a lot of things. At the simplest level, it's just like, OK, if you guys have multiple things you want to extract, uh, by default in Snorkel, you just, you know, if you have k different things you want to extract, you train k different models with Snorkel, k different Snorkel pipelines. Um, there's an old idea, or at least you know, back 90s and even further back in machine learning of like, well, what if we learn all these, you know, these k tasks kind of together? Can we pool information, right? Just like how, you know, it's bad to anthropomorphize too much, but how humans, you know, we learn kind of robust representations, presumably partly because we have to learn to do many different things with our, you know, internal representations. So can you do the same thing for models? Um, MTL seems to be kind of heating up again, and so we ask the complementary question of how do we deal with weak supervision uh, snorkel style for, for multiple different tasks? Um, so here's an example, right? So this is a, a, another case study we're working on with some people in the radiology department. We're just, imagine we're just trying to label these radiology reports as normal or abnormal. Some of our motivation is what happens if you have lots of different signal, but it's really at different levels of granularity. Now, now you know, to, in the, you know, the workshop already, you may have just sort of dumped these in um, all kind of as labeling the same thing, and that often works fine. But we wanted to know if we could do better. So you imagine, you know, you want to have labels or weak supervision or you know labeling functions for things like oh it's normal or abnormal. But you might also have, you know, for example, some sentiment models that are that you can download from the internet. Like there are a lot of them out there that just say okay this has negative sentiment or positive sentiment. This is like a really coarse grain label, not really a label for your task, but it seems like it should have some signal. Similarly, you might have really fine grained that's like too narrow and too specific. Like, you know, this patient has this phenotype or, or, or you know, problem. Um, either way, uh, our question is, you know, how can we make it easy to kind of bring all of these signals to bear, even though they're kind of labeling different things or at different levels of granularity? So the way we do this is we, we view it in the framework of multitask learning. We think of these as each 
labeling different tasks that are kind of related by this hierarchical uh, structure or other structures. And so the pipeline looks very similar here. Um, here the user provides, in, in the current iteration, um, some graph of how these different tasks relate. So they might say, look, sentiment is much coarser grain than normal or abnormal, and um, you know, this finer grain task, if it's a disease, it implies abnormal, so there's like a logical relation. So they provide some notion of how these, these tasks relate, provide unlabeled data, provide labeling functions. Here I have indexed by S, um, which this time can emit vectors. So these labeling functions are multitask labeling functions. They can emit labels for one of these tasks or for all of them. And then we just follow the same process as before, except now we're also training a multitask and model that's going to learn to predict all of these different tasks. So in the case where y2 and y3 have a logical relationship, can the labeling functions emit a nonsense result? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, m most generally, we might not even have like a, like a hard logical or, uh, um, you know, set here, in which case it's kind of like these should be probability distributions. Right. Um, but, but yeah, the, the idea right now is that we restrict it so it can't output a nonsense result. And that's what this, this graph buys us. And that's exactly the right intuition. Um, so if, if the labeling function disagrees about, the labeling function would emit a nonsense result for y2 and y3, what's, how generally do you resolve that conflict? Well, so I mean, that, that, well, you're, you're going exactly the direction <coughs> that I was, that, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're stealing my punchlines. Um, I'm, I'm happy to wait for no, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, the, the, the first consideration before resolving the conflicts is, um, like, can we learn from these agreements and disagreements? So, to, you know, to cut to the punchline, the intuition that I presented yesterday for how Snorkel learns the, you know, which labeling functions to trust is it looks at where they agree and disagree. And the idea is by putting all these tasks together and using these logical relations, we can get, like, now more agreement and disagreement signal. And then we resolve in the same way through this, this modeling stage. Um, so again, actually, yeah, this is the next slide. So again, you know, these are two different tasks, but this is kind of a disagreement here, right? This one says, oh, it sounds normal. This one says, actually, it has, the patient has this disease, right? Different tasks, but they have a disagreement because of the logical structure. Um, and so we can use this extra signal. Um, and then just to motivate a little bit, I guess I'm running out of time, but I'll just kind of breeze through. Um, again, you know, revisiting one of the examples we looked at yesterday of this, you know, chemical disease relation extraction. You know, we're really doing three tasks here. So this is a different set of tasks. The, the example I just gave was about this notion of different, you know, coarse and fine grained. Here's another example. Um, here there are three tasks, right? Task one, disease. Is it a disease? Is it a chemical mention? And task three, is it a causal relation? Right? So again, the way we set up the problem for kind of simplicity and practical reasons um, in, in the tutorial online, the workshop, is we just said, okay, look, we you know, just assume that we have already done task one and two. Right? This is also practically motivated because you know, in the bio world, there are, I think, eight or nine entities that um, uh, you know, account for 95% of all PubMed queries. I got that from you, so I really, I've said that like 10,000 times. I really hope it's... I trust Jason quite, quite, you know, enthusiastically. Um, weird word, but anyway, the um, the point is that like, um, you know, we, we kind of just fix those. But imagine you go into a domain not that's like you know not biomedicine, where you know actually extracting these entities is is tough in its own right. The point is how, how do we build a modern machine learning system that allows us to sort of do these three tasks all together more efficiently? How do we amortize labeling costs rather than just treating this as three separate pipelines? which is in effect what we were doing uh, in the workshop today and in the tutorials we have online. online. So this is an, another type of, of, of problem that we view as a multitask problem, and that's, again, what we're working on uh, now. Okay, so the idea, though, is that now um, we have this logical uh, task graph, right? So um, this is almost a more classical type of logical structure um, uh, as compared to the one that I showed before. But, you know, here we just have these implication relations, right? If, if the model thinks, you know, if we think that this is not a disease, then by implication this can't be a, a, a chemical disease relation, 
and similarly for that one. So we have this logical structure of relations between the tasks, and we should be able to use that. Um, so again, here's example labeling functions. You know, we could do distance supervision. We say, look, is, is the entity in a disease? Uh, we could use a pre-trained chemical tagger, which is in effect what we were actually using in, in the tutorial. Um, but here we could represent as a labeling function. We could use a pattern matching function like we had. So now um, we can model this. Um, by now we have one sort of unknown variable, label variable y for each of these tasks with a factor, this is a factor graph representation, a factor between them representing the logical implication that, that the user gave to us. And then these all have these labeling functions uh, that have unknown accuracies, and that's actually what we observe. The, the dark gray means it's an observed variable. There might be even correlations between them. We need to be able to pick that up. And again, the problem is how do we learn, we, 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 we can't observe these y's. So how the heck do we learn you know, the accuracies or what the y's are? That's, again, just our problem that we, we tackle in Snorkel. Um, and so again, this is just kind of repeating with a, a much more jumbled and confusing diagram, uh, what the same intuition as before, uh, which is that you know, if we have two labeling functions um, and they always disagree with each other over lots of unlabeled data, then according to our model, a simple but you know, useful model, um, one of them has to be low accuracy. One of them is higher accuracy. Similarly, let's assume that, we're, that you know, all the labeling functions are better than random. If they tend to agree all the time, then they should, they're probably both pretty accurate. Right? So this is just the, the, the intuition of how we learn these accuracies. So the extension of this multitask setting is that we can learn, this is just repeating what we said with a different diagram before. We can learn from cross-task agreements and disagreements. Right? If this labeling function says, no, this isn't a disease, tons of times when this labeling function says, yes, this is a causal relation, then that's a kind of partial disagreement and means one of them is less reliable. So again, you know, maybe these things, these two labeling functions don't overlap a lot. Actually, that's the point that I skipped over. But maybe these labeling functions don't overlap a lot. Maybe we don't have that many of them. Maybe if we just tackled this problem alone, we'd have a really tough time using Snorkel's approach to learn the accuracies. But, and this is our motivation, we see this empirically in our experiments to date, if we put these all together, we can use these cross-task overlaps to get a better, a better estimation of what we should trust and what we shouldn't. So, in the semantic structure that you outlined... Yeah, this, this is... To, I'll, I'll come clean here. This is a little bit of an older deck, and one thing I don't like about it is that I, th I think, well, this is just the point that you got it before, so I'm assuming you're, you're getting to this, is that if a labeling function says this is a causal relationship, it's implicitly also kind of labeling this task and this task. Well, but it wouldn't have to necessarily. So the labeling function example shown on the previous slide said if the word causes appears, then mark it a causal relationship. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily indicate the relationship between the diseases. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that, that's a great question as well, which is that um, there's a there's a, an aspect that relies on the user input as well in this setting that's not necessarily trivial either, which is how do you set this task structure, right? You know, you could just say, oh, this is all one task. These are all labeling functions. Just say, is this chem disease? And dump them all in, and you'll often do okay. That's kind of effectively what, pardon me, we do with a lot of the existing applications. Um, here, we're saying, okay, we think we'll do a little bit better if we recognize that some labeling functions are really just focusing on the chemicals, some are really just focusing on the diseases. Some are really just focusing on whether there's a relation between them. But you could break it down even finer. Um, you could say, okay, well, some labeling functions here are focused on, on specifically chemical disease relations. Some are focused on just any relations. Um, and that's just a, I mean, I don't have a great, you know, off-the-cuff answer for, um, uh, for uh, how you should break down problems. That's, uh, you know, definitely a, a further research topic as well as one that practically, you know, we'll have to, you'd have to test on. Um, but we're, we're kind of just starting on, on this direction as well, so. But it's a great question. Cool, and I'll just briefly mention in Metal, um, what we do is we kind of automatically compile a multitask model based on the logical structure. Um, 
And this is like the some of the bells and whistles you don't need to use, but um, we've ex been experimenting with. So if you have this three task structure with this kind of hierarchical nature, um, I won't even go into the details, but just visually, you can kind of construct a network architecture that looks similar, right? You have um, you have a piece. Of, this is how kind of MTL methods work. For those that are interested, um, this is not Snorkel specific. They they you know these days they tend to they share some part of the model. All three tasks share, and then they have like task specific parts. And so all we do is we say okay, well if we know there's this hierarchical structure that the user told us. We also assemble it the same way with the network. And that's all taken care of by the system. OK, so I'll, I'll skip to the end, because um, we're running over. Stuff I've already said. But like you know, a lot of the drive here is that there's an explosion of um, you know, commodity open source models, not just in single task settings, now even in multitask settings. If you dig around online, there's a flurry of research here. And it's all being open sourced. And you can, all, you know, you can download it increasingly and run it in PyTorch TensorFlow whatever, um, the bot, you know, we want to take advantage of that, right? But we want to overcome this bottleneck of training data and actually use it as an interface to kind of program these models. Um, and yeah, so that's hopefully what's, what provides some value to your projects already and also what we're interested in you know, trying to push forward and, and make even more accessible and performant. So yeah, thank you guys all for your time.